Welcome everyone to retail and restaurant signage. This is the rule of blade signs. And when we talk about blade signs, just take a look at this photo here. And what do you see? You, there's no, so I can't tell what's in any of these businesses. Um, and, you know, and if we keep looking down these, that's what we see. Those signs that you see coming up now by the red arrows, you only see them if you're across the street or unless you walk out into traffic and look back. And then, so that means now that we don't have any kind of blade signs, we have these little sandwich boards boards here, but you can't see those because if you're driving down the street, the cars are in the way. And so this has created a lot of sign clutter and some real challenges. And so there's no real incentive to walk down the street in this case. You know, if you look here, this is the same block, but now I'm across the street and now I can see what's over there, but it's not like I can go jaywalking across the street to get over there. So as you look at these, what do you see? What do what businesses do you see? What incentive do you have to keep walking down the sidewalk or looking at businesses as you're driving down the street? I mean, and in this case, what we see is I only see those signs from across the street. And then we've got a whole plethora of sandwich boards, you know, and, and so what we end up with is a bunch of sign clutter and a bunch of noise. So there is a way to fix it. And those are called blade signs. Blade signs are these signs that are perpendicular to you. So, and this is a perfect example in Canmore, Alberta. Here's one of those in Canmore for the kitchen boutique. These are blade signs and they're absolutely necessary for businesses to survive in the hearts of downtown. And they don't just have to be like these hanging out from the facades or below awnings. It can also include blade signs like this, but signs that are perpendicular to you as you are driving or walking down the street. You know, I mean, this is a perfect example. We don't need to have a whole bunch of sandwich boards and we can see Merle Norman Cosmetics, Vander Plog Bakery. I mean, this is what we're talking about with blade signs. So here are the five rules of blade signs. Number one, they should be consistent in size and placement. Now, they certainly don't all have to be cookie cutter. Oh, they can be oval, they can be square, they can be rectangle. But what we're talking talking about is height and, and here's some general rules. No lower than seven feet. We don't want anybody tall hitting their heads on the bottom of those signs. You know, no higher than nine feet, you know, no wider than 42 inches. And, and so approximately 18 inches from the stud. So when you have some uniformity to where they're placed, you don't end up with a bunch of sign clutter. You know, and if we keep going, typical sign sizing, that means the signs can be no longer, no higher than 24 inches. It doesn't mean they have to be 24. They could be 18. They could be six inches, you know, but roughly that you're working within those parameters, no wider than the 42 inches we mentioned just a minute ago and a consistent, you know, distance from the facade. And so that's going to be really important. You're seeing examples right here in Nantucket. Once again, each one fits the business, you know, and here is Carmel, California. And you can see what they did there. And so some towns, you know, where we have larger scale, like this photo you see here is in Valparaiso, Indiana, where we have a higher speed limit. It's multiple lanes. It's like two lanes of traffic each direction, or they're larger, taller. So in those cases, they might not fit those exact dimensions I just gave you. You know, but still no lower than seven feet, no higher than 10 feet, which means now we could have the signs that could be up to 36 inches tall and a little bit wider because we're going faster speed limits. And so we're going past these quicker. And so it can differentiate, but in most downtowns, it's the first set I just gave you. And that's really important to, in, in what you do. You know, now some towns have lots of awnings and under awnings, I think it's really great if like this in El Dorado, Arkansas, that the signs, the awnings used to hang down lower. So you can't put a 24 inch sign there. You'll bonk people on the head. So in their case, it might be a little narrower, maybe slightly wider, but they will also be shorter this way. So here's some general rules for signage that would fit under awnings. 
which I think are great ones to example. Here's another one also in El Dorado that shows you that. Now you see the food, atmosphere, and entertainment is a little bit distance away. I think it would probably be better if it was closer to the facade. But in that case, that awning extends out quite a bit further than neighboring awnings. But it still works. It's still consistent in height and size. You know, now sometimes you have standalone businesses. You don't have a row of businesses like you've seen in these photographs. And so I want to show you some examples of where we have standalone blade signs, like this one in Mahone Bay, uh, Nova Scotia, Birds All Pottery right there. You can see that. So it's on its own separate building. Um, but once again, it's pretty much the same dimensions. It could be a little bit bigger because we're just talking about one shop, you know, as a row of, as a pair to a row of businesses. You know, this one is in Cape May, New Jersey. I love this one, by the way, Scandinavian gifts. It's got the dollar horse there, you know, but that's really well done there. Once again, the bottom of sign is right about eight feet. Remember I said no lower than seven feet, but they've got it right there. And so in standalone buildings, you can be a little more flexible like you're seeing in these. I love this one for the Moorings Gallery. Um, it's just great, it's colorful, and it just looks really nice. So in these cases, there's still the same general rules, you know, but they're, since they're not in a row of shops, they can be a little bit taller and a little bit higher. Um, and I love that for cat, Catfish Moon Crafts. I think that's just fantastic. Um, you know, here's one in Madison, Indiana, beautiful downtown, by the way, uh, for the attic. And once again, when you see them on standalone buildings, these are some good examples that you can emulate. So size and consistent placement is really critical so you don't end up with sign clutter. Number two on this list is always market the lure, not the name of the business. When you see this sign, do you know what it is? I mean, actually, they sold T-shirts and souvenirs, you know, but but um, you need to sell. Always tell us what it is you're selling, not the name of the store. I mean, the same with this one. It's silver lining. They even have a little blade sign, but I have no idea what silver lining is. So always market the lure, that one thing that will pull us in the door before you market the name of the business. You know, in this example in Leavenworth, Washington, it's really clear what you see. Chocolates. I mean, you see it instantly. Collectibles. You can see here. Trains. You can see here. It's a restaurant. Always promote that first, you know, and that is really, really critical. Put on the sign. If it's antiques, you may say, but I sell more than antiques. Well, which one of the things you sell is most likely to pull people in your door? And number three with this is never more than four words on a blade sign. I mean, I took this in, in um, West Yellowstone, Montana. It says old fashioned candy and fudge. That's four words. Now down below, they do have a, a sandwich board, which is in a different presentation, but in there they can add more words because that's mainly for pedestrians. But if you're driving by, you know, you want to see those four words or fewer. You know, even the one behind it, beef jerky experience, it's those three words. And you can see, see it, taste it, share it. You'd only really notice those if you're walking under it. So that's really critical in this case. And so number four on this list is to avoid script or outline fonts. Those are so hard to read from a vehicle. They're even hard to read from a, uh, from a pedestrian standpoint. So for instance, this one, you're seeing it standing still, looking at it big on your screen, the wood merchant, can you read what's below it? And when I show that to bigger audiences, they can't read it all because it's a script font. So now in their case, if you want to sell the lure first, I would put in block like where it says the wood merchant. I would put in that sign just handmade gifts and furniture. And then on the sign itself, you could, so that's where I'd put just handmade gifts and furniture. But then on the windows, they have the name of the store. So handmade gifts and furniture is what's going to pull us in. And the wood merchant we can put on, on the front, on the windows, on the door, like you see here. Does that make sense? And then number five, allow blade signs. I've worked in many, many cities and towns that don't even allow them. And that's a real shame because it's really critical 
to the success of your businesses in your downtown. Now, in this case, when you allow them, this is in Lethbridge, Alberta. These are built to 100 mile an hour wind loads. You're 100 kilometers an hour, which is 60 mile an hour wind loads. And so you can see these right here, what they did. So you can put in your ordinances, we're gonna allow blade signs, but they should withstand X amount of wind loads. So they're not gonna blow down. And, and the size and placement can be there, like the guidelines I already gave you. You know, lighting, and by the way, backlit signs that ended in the 70s. You know, now what you'd have is LED lines on your facade facing your signs, little spotlights. They take very little power. A lot of them are even low voltage. And so the lighting can be on the on the facade. So that could be included in that, you know. And by the way, it's always blade signs should be included in the, turn, the tenant's insurance or the property owner, the merchant's insurance. And so those are things that you can include in this. In this case, the Lethbridge, they were just putting them in so you can see where they do the signs and they can replace the centerpiece of these signs if, if the businesses would change. And all those little, all the little links for the chains, they're actually welded. So these don't move in the wind. And that's really important. And then another rule you might put in there is no more than one per 20 feet. So if uh, most businesses in a downtown are 20 foot width segments. So if they have 40 feet, they could do two. But in this case, they've got a lot, there's almost too many signs here. I mean, they're like every five feet. What happens is you just get assaulted with too many. I think these are great signs, but I just think there's just too many of them. So you could do rules like that, one for every 20 feet or one per business, you know, that type of thing. And so when you see this, I think this is a great example. The, the signs are classy, they're nice, they add to the ambience, and, and they're necessary for small business survival. And so with that, we just covered the power of blade signs and they are really necessary for a downtown and here's to an effective blade sign program for your community.